Nebraska Department of Ag Director Greg Iba is in China this week, joining U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Sonny Perdue and U.S. Ambassador to China Terry Branstad as American beef returns to the world's most populous country. After banning it in December 2003, China announced earlier this year it would again bring in product with certain restrictions. In mid-June, Nebraska officials joined Greater Omaha Packing to load the first boxes of beef headed to China. Nebraska is the largest beef exporting state in the country. It accounted for 18 percent of the U.S. total in 2016, ahead of Texas in second and Kansas in third. Greg joined us last Friday to discuss several trade topics, including prospects in Canada, Mexico and Japan. But we started by asking for an update of the outlook in China at that time. Well, as of today, we are reading in uh, Chinese newspapers or news-related articles that uh, the first shipments of beef have cleared customs in China, and uh, we're excited about that, of course. And uh, we've actually had quite a bit of activity in our offices, as well as hearing from packers uh, that are approved, because there's only four and three of them are Nebraska companies as of today, that a uh, lot of interest in U.S. beef as well. What are the guidelines for shipping into the country? So those are, we're still learning more about them, uh, but it appears that they have specified that they want naturally occurring levels of hormones and probably aren't interested in rectopamine being a, a feed additive. And so uh, those uh, make it similar to what the EU takes. Uh, and I, what I'm hearing is that the packers that are considering shipments or making shipments are sending them the same beef that's qualified for the European Union right now. So how important is that market with in mind those guidelines? Well, those guidelines, I think there'll still be a lot of beef available. Hopefully as we test the market and understand those uh, import protocols and the testing protocols that China is going to implement and understand you know, what flexibility or what the parameters for those tests are, that maybe more, more beef or we, it, people can send a wider variety of shipments into China. And of course it needs to be traceable uh, as well and so that's important. But I think we have a lot of beef that's qualified and we're uh, anticipating if we would capture the same market share that we have uh, in, in average around the world, it could be a $200 million market for Nebraska alone. The governor announced this week that uh, he'll lead a trade mission to Canada in August. Why is Canada an important market for Nebraska? Well, Canada is an important market because they're our neighbor. They're our fourth largest ag importer. They're our number one overall export market. And so uh, that uh, definitely shows that there's activity even outside of agriculture. And, you know, many times uh, we've focused on um, something over the sea. Mm -hmm and we haven't necessarily reached out to the customers right next door to us. The governor a few weeks ago with Mexico the Corn Board hosted a Mexican delegation and uh, we're reaching out to Canada. And further then in September there will be a trade mission to Japan. What will that include? So Japan's in conjunction with the Midwest Japan Conference. Next year uh, or the next conference will be hosted by Nebraska which will be the 50th anniversary of that conference so we're looking forward to that. And so this will uh, be an extension of that and uh, we're going to take advantage while the governor's already over there attending that conference to be able to do some agricultural export promotion activities, beef and pork for sure, and probably also look at some of the other uh, byproducts, corn, wheat, soybeans that go over there as well. And then uh, we'll uh, uh, also promote the investment that J uh, Japan is making in Nebraska with different companies. When it comes to Japan, they were a member of TPP, as was the U.S. Now that that looks like it's dead, can you talk about the future of trade there and maybe potential trade deals? Well, and you, even going back to the, uh, the outreach we've had between Mexico and Canada, and you know we're, that's to assure them that even though there are discussions underway with NAFTA we want them to know that agriculture values them as a trading partner and so that's part of the reason uh, we're accentuating that as well. You know there's uh, different news stories out there that uh, USDA, USTR and Commerce are, are in discussions with Japan 
about maybe a bilateral agreement that would broaden s especially some of the ag trade options and you know some weeks there's a story out that says it's eminent and the next week the the story says maybe not so soon but you know i think it's all part of we want to be there as a state we want to have our producers represented we want to be asking for their business so when the opportunities do emerge or they expand that uh, our companies are able to take advantage of them.